waging war on corruption. Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Welcome to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and we are here on Thursday, June 5th, 2014, the one-year anniversary of the first documents from Edward Snowden that I think have done a lot to wake up the American public. And the question is, though, are we going to do something about it or are we going to just become adjusted to it? Is it going to become the new normal? Because now it's almost become passe to say that the government is watching us. When we were saying it, when Alex Jones was saying it for years, for decades, people would laugh at him as being a conspiracy theorist. We had whistleblowers from the NSA in the early 2000s, about 10 years before the Snowden leaks, telling us what was happening, that the surveillance state was moving from looking at possible terrorists and spies abroad to turning inward on the American people, compiling vast dossiers on people who were not suspected of any crime. What's that about? Let's take a look at one of the older reports that we had throughout this last year about Ed Snowden, and then we're going to take your calls at 800-259-9231. Let's go to that report. Well, Obama's defense of the NSA's constant surveillance of all Americans just reached a new level of absurdity when he compared them to Paul Revere. After blatantly lying, even they realize they don't have any credibility. We're putting out mindless propaganda is what some of us feel that we're putting out and that what the American people feel that we're putting out. What's a tyrant to do? Well, you could pull in some corporate billionaires who work hand in glove with the NSA. I'm sure that would help. So it's not as though uh, government surveillance is absolutely bad in all cases. Is, is, it, is it done in a way that uh, people trust that the uh, normal privacy concerns are, are being adhered to? It's interesting that Gates would be talking about trust. Microsoft was the first company to partner with the NSA on violating your trust and spying on you without reason and without a warrant. Internet companies want you to trust them with your data, and the government wants you to give your data to a third party like Microsoft so they can get that data without a search warrant. They merely ask companies like Microsoft, and Microsoft eagerly turns over all of your information. But it's not just Gates with soothing words for the public. Mark Andreessen, Netscape founder, now venture capitalist, took to Twitter this week to defend the NSA, and government cheerleaders and the press were relieved that Finally, someone had the guts to defend the NSA. Andreessen tweeted, I increasingly feel like we're on some gigantic collective fainting couch. Oh my word, I can't believe that spy agencies spy. In the US, we all collectively hired tens of thousands of our fellow citizens and gave them $75 billion a year with a mission to spy on our behalf. Do you notice the subtle lie here? It's not that the NSA is spying on our behalf, it's that they're spying on us, illegally. He completely loses the context of FISA. The F stands for foreign, and it was created because we learned in the 70s, during the Church Commission, that spy agencies weren't just spying, they were engaged in all kinds of criminal activity as well. The purpose of FISA was to restrict the CIA and the NSA from spying domestically. But Andreessen tries to confuse the issue further by saying, to suddenly turn on them and blanket accuse them of comprehensive illegality and moral horrors is unfair to them, and it lets us off the hook. Is it unfair to accuse the NSA of comprehensive illegality when they lie to Congress, when they violate FISA and the Constitution and spy on all Americans without a search warrant? Andreessen has been trying to cover for the NSA from the very beginning of the Snowden leaks trying to muddy the waters by claiming that the NSA critics are too stupid to understand the technology involved. American citizens, as well as not American citizens, direct access, no oversight, no court order, these very sweeping claims. And the thing that's been so frustrating from my perspective is the sort of issue of technology in our society and the internet in our society is a central issue. And to talk about it, you actually have to, people have to understand the technology. People have to actually be willing to understand the technology. And the original reporting simply did not understand the technology. Andreessen saying critics simply don't understand technology couldn't be a bigger lie. 
Multiple NSA whistleblowers told us about illegal surveillance 12 years ago. In the near future. When you realize how fake it all is, the football, the basketball. Alert. Security alert. This is Homeland Security. Analysis. Infowars building independent media operations. You let the worst people get controlled and tell us that we are the ones responsible. Prime Directive discredit Alex Jones. Jones is the wildly popular conspiracy theorist. It's a popular conspiracy theory talk show called Infowars. Alex Jones is now in an Austin jail. These people are assaulted. Targeting of patriots engaged. They are never going to stop. They're never going to deviate from their program until we stop them. Block free iPhone app at infowars.com. Block free podcast and video feed. Imperative. Destroy Prison Planet TV. You gotta set your eye on the enemy, not worry about what propaganda they put out intellectually. It's because you can feel it. I don't know what it is. Ralph just won't pay any attention to me. When he comes home from work, all he ever does is play video games and go to sleep. It's like I don't even exist. Oh, Betty, that's just awful. Does this seem familiar? If the answer to this question is yes, then listen carefully. Toxic pesticides, GMO foods and additives, BPA plastics, contaminated water supplies. Many of these toxic additives are deliberately engineered to attack and weaken human masculinity. It's part of the eugenics population control movement. Look it up. If men are more interested in online gaming than they are in their wives. A serious population crisis is soon to follow. Energize the man in your life with super male vitality from InfoWarsLife.com. It's designed to aid the body in ways that help invigorate your natural systems without artificial testosterone, completely free of GMOs, harmful additives, gluten, and is made right here in the USA. Get your super male vitality right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-888-253-3139. A chemical spill contaminating the water supply in nine West Virginia counties. This year alone, over 300,000 people in West Virginia had their drinking water contaminated. What are the health effects of having these drugs in our drinking water? It's forced medical treatment without the consent of residents. My friends, water filtration is one of the most basic actions you can take to protect you and your family from the harmful toxins and heavy metals in your tap water. On average, the county says it sprays with the glyphosate at least once a week. Few filters cut out the glyphosate that is found in water supply worldwide. Remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, hydrofluorosilicic acid, sodium hexafluorosilicate. Fluoride, it is in tea, it's in coffee, it's in water, it's in bread, it's in toothpaste. It is our responsibility to protect our families. The establishment's not going to do it. It's time to take action. It's time to filter our water. Visit InfoWarsStore.com and use promo code WATER to get 10% off their entire family of incredible products. Or call toll-free 888-253-3139. The Genesis Communications Radio Network proudly presents The Alex Jones Show, because there's a war on for your mind. Welcome back to The Alex Jones Show. I am David Knight, and here we are on the one-year anniversary of the Ed Snowden documents, the very first documents that were leaked. And, of course, there's been a steady stream of documents over the last year. It's now almost become passe for people to say, hey, the government's spying on us. Are we going to get adjusted to that? Are we going to accept that? Are we going to love our slavery? Or are we going to push back? Some people have a Reset the Net campaign, hashtag Reset the Net, it's ResetTheNet.org, trying to encourage people to take individual action, just as we encourage you to take individual action when it comes to water fluoridation or GMO in your food. There are certain things that you can do. But we also want to work together collectively to try to get individual liberty. And so I want to get your comments on this one-year anniversary of the beginning of the Snowden documents. Of course, they have promised, uh, Glenn Greenwald has promised that he is going to, as a, kind of a grand finale, he's going to release a list of all the people that the NSA has been targeting. I'm going to be very disappointed if I'm not on that list. How about you? If we're not on that list, maybe we're not doing enough to speak out, to educate, to push back against this. They're spying on everybody, so <laughs> why aren't we on that list? Uh, I want to take your comments. We've got uh, Francis in North Carolina. You had a comment about Snowden? Go ahead. Hi, David. Hi. Uh, one, when I first learned about uh, Snowden doing this deal, I thought, you know, finally someone's actually showing they got testicle fortitude to actually present to the people what's really being done to them, and especially from the backside of the situation. 
Mm -hmm. So quite frankly, it's like, it's about bloody time. Yes. Uh, Of course, at that time when I made that comment to people, they thought I was absolutely out of my mind. I'd lost it, for that matter. And was basically a traitor. And quite frankly, the uh, politicians, the alphabet soup agencies and all that, they are the actual traitors to start with. I couldn't agree with you more. uh, Yeah. Now, the, the, now the sad part is that, mind you, when Obama actually went into a campaign to go into office, I figured he had to be better than the shrub or whoever was before him as far as his uh, predecessor is concerned. So I actually, I'm making an obvious con- confession about this, is that the first time I actually campaigned to try to help him get elected, not realizing just how that big of a uh, screw deal he was. Mm-hmm. Because shortly after he got into office, everything went downhill. Now, what I'm trying to figure out is, just like with uh, uh, Bush Jr., how it is that people would go and vote, well, actually, I realize that people didn't really vote for him because the voting machines were rigged at that time, Uh, the fact that Obama got in the second time for a second term. Uh, So it's like, you know something, when you've got voting machines that are riggable and all that uh, computer-wise or whatnot are hacked into, uh, it's really you're cutting your own throat by allowing the corporations to go and do that to you and people being on the illusion that their vote counts. If it did, then withdraw it because they don't deserve it and never did. Well, that's true. It's, it's always a question, you know, do we participate in the uh, system that is rigged from the very beginning? I mean, I was involved in third-party politics. I know that they cut off access to the debates. They cut off access to the ballots for most people. We don't have a multi-party uh, elections in this country anymore. And then, of course, they control how the votes are counted. They control the custody of the votes. They control the totaling of the votes. They control the reporting of the votes. There are so many different places where they can essentially come in and corrupt it. So it's a, it's a very difficult system to make a to make a decision as to whether or not you're going to participate in it or whether you're going to boycott it. I, I understand there's arguments for both sides. I mean, personally, I like to always uh, get in there and fight something as opposed to just stepping back. It seems like stepping back is a passive thing to do, but I, I accept the other argument. Uh, I really believe, though, that where we're going to make headway is if we understand certain things like jury nullification. If you're one of 12 people, or in some cases, six people, depending on what they do, you have a real opportunity to shut down the, uh, the, a bad law or shut down a draconian application. Or maybe, maybe you fundamentally agree with it, but you don't agree with uh, the, the penalties that are involved in it. But basically, we can, if we exercise those powers, and essentially jury trials are all but dead anymore. And we're now getting to the point where, as we've learned from some of these Snowden leaks, that we don't even have a court system anymore. There was just an article, I've got this right here on my desk. Uh, This came out earlier this week. Sealed court files, this is from the Wall Street Journal Online, sealed court files obscure a rise in electronic surveillance. And this is right here in Texas. This is a federal magistrate magistrate judge, sorry, Brian Owsley, who approved scores of government requests for electronic surveillance in connection with criminal investigations, and then he sealed them at the request of the government. He was bothered by that. So after he retired last year, he went back to unseal more than 100 of his secret orders. Now, these are things that, were, uh, along with the government's legal justification for their surveillance, these were not things like terrorism. These were things for like bank robbery, drug trafficking, they were not state secrets, he said. A senior judge halted the effort with a one-paragraph order that offered no explanation for the decision. Now, this judge is saying that he thinks it's like something out of Kafka. He's very concerned about this, that we have such a secretive society. And I think that's one of the key things that's come out of the Snowden documents, is for people to understand that the government is shutting off all transparency, all information about everything that they're doing, that is an incredibly, incredibly dangerous thing. And let me tell you where this is going to head. In The Guardian today, there was an article from Owen Jones, and he says, Britain's first secret trial. This is the way of trouble. This way lies trouble. And he says that they had two men who were known only as AB and CD. For people uh, that have ever watched any of the cartoon, uh, kids' cartoons, it sounds like bananas in pajama, you you know, B1 and B2. Uh, My kids used to see that when they were very young. He said, they've been charged with terrorism, these two people, AB and CD. Journalists were forbidden from 